I don't know if anyone else would be here. And live. <laughs> hey, everybody, whoever's out there. Hello, hello. Glad you're here. My name's Tamara Woods, and this is my channel where I talk about books and writing. Um, apparently, I only do it once, once a month now. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You'll be back. You'll be back. You've had kind of a lot going on lately. So, yeah. So, I'm, I'm really glad that you like kept this going, though, once a month. So at least we get to see you then. Thanks. I was like, I have to be on the channel at least one time <laughs> so people can know I still exist. Um, well, we were all concerned. You know, there were some rumors about a kidnapping. And, yeah. So we just, this is like a proof of life oh, video Lord. that we all get like once a month. So we know you're okay. I accept. <laughs> Would you all like to introduce yourselves? We can start with Lisa and then work your way up. Uh, okay, hi everybody. I'm Lisa Daly. I'm a traditionally published author of romantic comedies and nonfiction. And over on my channel, we talk about how to write a book you're super proud of and get it published. Ta-da! Thank you for having me today. Thank you for being here. I love me some craft books, you know, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> And I am CJ Boyer. I'm an unpublished writer of things. And yeah, I, that's about it. And hello, Latrice. And hello, Sarah. Thank you for being here. CJ and Lisa pull on double duty in the comments. Awesome. Um, I did an excellent job with promoting this by not even putting a promotional <laughs> video on the channel. So. <laughs> did a great job. So if it's, it's just great. the five of us, we're going to be okay. We're going to have a really good talk. It's yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, now I'm going to have to like tweet this thing out. All right. Here we yeah, go. Maybe one other person. <laughs> I was going to say I can bring in us. one more person. All right. <sighs> I'm, I'm doing it though. Tell us all about you and your channel, Awesome Tamara. So um, normally on my channel, I do live streams and I discuss different aspects of writing. And we've kind of distilled down to doing writer's workshop where <laughs> we talk about um, a book about the, somehow that'll help our writing journey, whether it's craft, um, pop, it, um, or the writer's life in general. So this book, Release Strategies, um, discusses basically how you can release a book as an indie. Like, what can you do? Uh, the time frame, what you need to have in mind, um, different different types of releases that people do. And um, he even talked in terms of book length. So let's say you were, like right now I'm writing very short books and mm -hmm. the difference between releasing short books in different genres versus um, like epic novels that are sci-fi and and that's what it's all about essentially so and I think this book had 168 pages if I'm not mistaken so it wasn't a long read yeah it wasn't it wasn't bad that way at all and we bought it well we got it for free he had this is part of his um, successful in the author bundle I think there's five books in that bundle and we got them for free last month when he was doing like some type of thing. I don't know if he's planning on uh, doing like an update or re-release or something because this was published in 2019. So he may be about to re-release them. But I, I, I feel like when I looked at it today earlier um, that it was still going on, I think that it was still on sale I'm just going to peek at it really quick on Amazon and see, but I think it was still free. Hmm. Uh, Craig Martell. Yeah. Well, oh no, it's, it's back to two ninety nine. Okay. But, but still is, not, not unreasonable if you are, if you're interested in it. But is it in, I think it's yeah. in Kindle Unlimited. It is in Kindle Unlimited. So you can read it for free. So you can read it for free that way. Um, or, I'll, or I'll loan you my copy. Just send me a message. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm done with it. <laughs> I generally like uh, Craig Martell. 
Um, I'm in his uh, 20 books to 50K group on Facebook. And he he's very experienced. He has a huge, huge um, catalog of books. And he does a lot in terms of uh, stuff. He does stuff within the writing community. He does a lot of collaborative works with book series and, you know, so he's pretty experienced. That was one of the reasons why I was interested in reading this. Also, I feel like I could use some more strategies in terms of book. Like I have uh, stumbled a bit with that mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. Well, and you're planning, aren't you planning on doing kind of like a, a, a re-release like you had done, that like you'd started, you were going to do a pre-order, you did a pre-order, and then you decided you're going to do like a really, put some more effort into the big launch, right? Yeah, the pre-order kind of, um, I, don't, I don't know what happened. There was some issues and I decided to, I, let's see, how did it go? Um, Amazon canceled it or something something very weird happened at the end of last year but i think like normally if something happens with your pre-order your pre-release you'll be you'll re receive a penalty and i think it's like a year where you can't do pre-orders anymore but because mm -hmm. last year was so crappy they just like sure. amazon was like okay everyone gets a pass right this right. year's been terrible. Just let's try again next year. Yeah. <laughs> so, so instead of um, rushing through and going through with the pre-order, I decided to hold back a little bit because my personal life has been um, interesting. Challenging. It's been very interesting times. Yes, challenging. Yeah. Uh, it's been in flux. So I decided to concentrate more on personal life than the writing, but still keep my toe in it. And I've actually been working on um, some different books that will be shorter. And I wanted to learn a bit more about how to do releases for fairly short books. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and he did touch on it in this book, which was exciting. His, these um, shorter books that I'm writing, are not cozies. They're actually as far out of the wheelhouse, I think, as possible. They're like straight up erotica. And um, as he mentioned in this book, there's there's some constrictions with uh, doing ads and stuff for erotica, like on Amazon and things. Like uh -huh, uh -huh. And I think that even when you're doing a search for books, that erotica doesn't necessarily pop up in the search. Oh. Well, uh, th there are some, uh, <laughs> so there are, <laughs> there are some, I'm, I recently did some market research on this particular topic and there are some that come up and then there are, you know, ways that erotica authors sort of use these like keywords to kind of let readers know what, you know, help them find what they're looking for while still sort of staying under the Amazon uh, radar. So, and a lot of erotica is just um, categorized in, even though it, you know, it's clearly erotica, it's categorized in some of the more, um, more, uh, you know, common genres. So I was kind of surprised about that. Uh, you know, just in looking at all those different categories, but there certainly are categories for erotica. So I don't know, but I think they, I think they probably, I think it's like YouTube where they probably hide, you know, some of those results depending on, mm. um, you know, what the category is and what the title is. So mm. it's fascinating though, really. This, the whole Amazon algorithm is fascinating to me. Oh, it doesn't make sense to me at yes. all. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that he, so I was fascinated. I don't have much familiarity with him. I'd heard his name. I'd heard about the um, 20 books to 50K, which I, which felt like, 
such a um, like such a solid idea that a lot of people could kind of get behind. It also feels like God, that's a lot of work for fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> but okay, let's you know, like I think that I I think it's so sort of solid. I will say I found his writing to be a little, and I was trying to really separate the ideas from the writing because for me, his kind of Lee, I felt like he was a better editor or an editor. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's some good ideas in there, but you really had to wade through, I thought, a lot of stuff. Did you guys have that experience or no? Hmm. He's wordy. Just me. He's yeah. a wordy guy. Yeah, I just felt like there were, there were sort of a lot of, like, um, yeah, like little, you know, kind of side stories. And some of them were relevant and interesting. And you guys know me. I am the queen of the sidebar, right? I mean, I go all over the place. But even I was like, where are we going on this roller coaster, dude? So, yeah. There were some, there were some very good little uh, bits of advice, though. I'll be honest, I skimmed a lot of this because I started reading at eight o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. um, so I skimmed through a lot of it. So I don't, I didn't feel like there was a lot of wordiness just because I skipped a lot of like, oh, this isn't actually, this is just a story you're telling me. I'm just going to skip over it. <laughs> um, right. I don't right, need to hear this right. story. <laughs> like, right. I don't have time for this story. I will go back and I will read it later if it really is that pertinent. Um, I did find there were aspects of it I found very helpful, like um, the the idea that your release strategy should come from your capacity to produce, rather than like I've read I've read or we've read books that have, or like I've read blog posts and stuff where they're like, this lucrative thing is to rapid release or the most lucrative thing is to do, or you should always, you should always appreciate it. Uh, don't do something just because someone else tells you you should do it. If you can do this, if you can't try this, uh, mm -hmm. but like, he was very adamant about it has to be, he kept talking about that uh, under, under promise and overproduce or over deliver. Over deliver, right. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And the idea that that has to come from your capacity rather than what someone else's expectations are. And that whole idea, I did appreciate, and this is something I have to remember because I tend to forget this, um, he had a big emphasis on this is a marathon. This is not a sprint. Uh, this is a long-term commitment. If this is want to do, most of us want to be writers for the rest of our lives. Right. It feels like take that into account. If for the if, length, right? I mean, it feels like a sprint all the time, like the length of a marathon. But yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Um, right. Feels but like you're on a the idea that the hamster wheel forever. <laughs> but you don't have to, and this was for me very helpful. I don't have to. If I can't produce a book every month, I don't have to like buy into that framework. If I can produce a book a year, that's okay. Yeah. Well. That that was one anything I and maybe I missed the part about a uh, book a year. I thought his slowest book release strategy was a a book a quarter. And I, I do I, think that the um, he said that if you like CJ said he said that if um, you can only do a book a year then do that. Right. But that, right. but like within his experience, I think the slowest he did was quarter release for a, some series. Mm -hmm. I don't know, he had so many books. Yeah, he yeah. really and, he really did. Yeah. And like, so a lot of this was based on his personal experiences. Right. So he talked about um, releasing one book a month, 
uh, he discussed trying to do a book every two weeks and how that worked out for him, which he didn't like that. No. That, that wasn't yeah. part of his wheelhouse. He talked about how there are people who do weekly releases and he said that that would just be out, that wouldn't work for him at all. Because a lot of this also depends on like how much you can produce and your genre. Right. So he, what was it? He yeah. was writing a military sci-fi, was that what it was? Military something. And that was what he tried to do the two, every two weeks release. And it didn't work because the readers didn't have enough time to read it. Right. Right. So, which, ma which makes right. a lot of sense. And yeah, I do. Those are yeah. like girthy books, right? Chock right. full of a lot of stuff. Details and right, exactly. And I do think his point, and speaking to your point, CJ, about how you should release on the sketch, like deliver what you promise you're going to. So, if you are a one book a year kind of a person, which I pretty much am, I'm going to try and up my output this year, but. In my entire career, I have the closest I've ever come to more than one book a year was the year that I released two books in 11 months. And it felt like... Now, I did tour for the one book, so that was part of the thing that felt like it was going to kill me. But not everybody can do that. But if you don't, you know, if you say, oh, I'm going to release more in this series, or I'll release a book a month, and then you you do one and then you don't do another one for another year or another six months, then yeah, then your readers kind of wander off and lose interest and go on to somebody else. Although that's true right. sometimes if you're releasing once a year anyway, even if you tell them I'll be back next year, they forget. So. Yeah. There's, there's so much now that takes attention for mm -hmm. entertainment. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Um, so what was something that you didn't like about this book other than his wordiness? Oh, so uh, there were a, like, there were a couple of things. He, so he has, bag for me. Like he has a lot of reliance on advertising and things like that. And of course, because the book is a couple years old, there are some things that are out of date. So one of the things he talks about uh, like in the beginning quarter of the book or something is um, doing like a giveaway in order to boost your number of Amazon followers. And of course, and Amazon doesn't do that anymore. That's not a thing that they offer anymore. So I would, I'm sure that he probably is at some point gonna, going to um, uh, update the book and probably will address that. The, th the thing that I didn't, love about it is that I well the thing I didn't love about it was not so much his advice but kind of the chaotic chaotic way for me at least the chaotic way that he kind of um, introduced a lot of this information that said I also appreciated the fact that he like he gave you sort of updates at the end of every chapter to kind of give you like the bullet points of what he was talking about and so I did really like that aspect of it um yeah like were, the too long didn't read <laughs> right right exactly right exactly um and i so i thought that i thought that was good i thought that I, I really did appreciate the fact that he had specific release strategies for shorter books because i don't think that i've ever seen that anywhere else before where, where people specifically talked about release strategies for short books. Normally they don't. Normally it's a, you know, novels or very, or like extremely long novels. They don't really talk about um, sh the short end of the stick. And I feel like um, that's something that's just, maybe they assume that in order to make a living that you have to write longer books. Uh -huh. I'm not sure. But I think that at least what I'm finding, if you write the shorter books, you have to turn them out more Faster. often. Faster, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think there's, yeah, I think there's some real truth to that. Because the op the reader is like, okay, well, you know, I'll pay two ninety nine or dollar ninety nine for this, you know, for this 30,000 word book, but I'm gonna want 
but I'm going to want more. I want more. <laughs> I want more. I want more. So yeah, I, I could see that. Um, the, the other thing is that it's the, I want to, I'm trying to like get out of his, like get out of the writing. Cause that really did. I don't know why I found it such a distraction, but I really did. Mm. Um, I also thought that the, um, that the sort of launch strategy, the first book checklist, I love that. I thought that was really great, especially for authors who had not had, you know, those kinds of experiences before. Like, because a lot of times people are like, I don't know what to do for a launch. I have no idea. And so he's like, do this, do these 17,000 things. Well, it's not 17,000. It's a lot, but it was but a lot. It, it, it is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, not just for him though. It's a lot to launch a book. So it's yeah. not that he made that up and now you have to do more stuff. He just put it in a convenient checklist for you. So you know exactly how much crap you have to do. So yeah, yeah there's that. It's just, it's just Great. a lot, period. And yeah. it's easy to um, forget aspects of things, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to yes. look, oh, here's a thing that I forgot that I need to schedule in. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. He does rely a lot right. on advertising. And that is, that's not going to be a part of my life for a while, I think. Well, that, so that's it. That was one of the things. Well, right. We, we mentioned that earlier. That's not feasible for a lot of authors and especially not a lot of authors who are just starting out. That mm. there's, there's a lot. And I know a lot of indie authors go like, well, as soon as you start advertising, you start making all that money back. And, but it feels a lot like gambling. <laughs> For especially for people who are starting out their first book on a budget, you've already got to pay for your cover designer and your editor and a million, you know, promotion and a million other things. Um, one of the things that I like, which is my favorite thing to harp on, is that he does talk about how you really need a newsletter and how you should not, um, you should not rely on your Twitter account or your Facebook or even your Amazon followers that you need to have all these people in your own stable. I am like the high priestess of have a newser. That just me, you guys all just disappeared for a second. So, so I really did like, I really did like that. And I also thought it was really interesting and I'm not going to remember the exact numbers. I really thought it was interesting when he talked about, okay, so if you have a newsletter of a thousand people and you send out to that, um, if you send out to that newsletter, then like a hundred people will buy your book. And I feel like those numbers were a little bit low, but his open rate was a lot lower than mine is. So maybe that was the difference, but I do not rate series. He does. And here's what I found, uh, what I found fascinating. I've had some experience with this, but not with my own books. And that was, he was talking about the sell through rate on from book one to book two. I don't remember what the number was, but it was kind of low, let's say 10 or 15%. But that if you got 50%. Them to book, that's it. Uh, yes. Did she freeze? It, I'm sorry. He said for, from book one to book two, he said 50%. I didn't think it was that high. I thought it was low from book one to book two, but if he gets you to book three, it's like, I thought book two to book three was like 50. And then after three, if you get to book three, there's an 80% chance you're reading all the way through the series, which is if you I can write was, a series really, I could yeah. be wrong. Maybe it was, I, that was 10%. What I, maybe it was, sorry. That's what, like, it was pretty low to get people from book one to book two, but once you got them to book three, you were just in the money all the way down the line. People are going to buy, buy, buy all of your books because they're deeply invested in this series. And that and, makes sense. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. At least with right. my own reading, I noticed that one, if this looks like it's going to be a series and there's only the first book out, I'm less likely to buy it now. I'll wait right. until there are a few books out. And then if there are right. a few books, I'll, I'll give the first book a chance. And if it's oh, okay, it's second book. Oh, okay. But if I get to the third book and I didn't enjoy it or it didn't really catch me, then I'm not going to keep on with it. So I, right. I'd absolutely understand that. Yeah. Um, and then he was talking about, because his he has a series and they're like 18 books. Like he writes right. very right. 
long series. And he, uh, it, one thing I found interesting was when he was talking about he had a um, trilogy, but mm. then he decided to add the fourth book. But because he had been talking about it and advertising it as a trilogy, then those readers didn't come back for the fourth book. Right. So right. he said that he learned from that to just call it a series, even if it was only three. So I thought right. that was interesting, just in terms of like language and how right. you present the work to the people. Yeah, I thought so right. too. And, and I think his other strategy was pretty cool. Whereas he'll have the, and this is not something new, but the way that he approached it, I thought was kind of new. That he'll have his reader magnet, you know, like a short story or a little novella or something in the same series, uh, like uh, up on Booksprout or one of those other places where you basically, you know, somebody can read it for free if they review the book or join your newsletter or both. And so he called that book zero because Amazon won't let you do book zero. And so and he and so he sort of added to that like perma free concept where you have the first book for free to get people sort of sucked into the series. And then the second book is kind of a low price. And then by the third, you know, it's a little higher and then it, you know, goes right through the series. So I did think that was I, I thought that was a good idea. And I'm all in favor of, um, you know, of short stories or newsletter, you know, magnets to get readers onto your newsletter list. So I, I thought that was a good thing for him. I do. Um, I wonder, I mean, he has so many different series and I know a lot of them are in the same genre, but he, you know, he's done some other stuff that is not in the same genre. Yeah. I, um, did he talk about it? I, I, I remember him um, discussing his uh, cozy mystery for mm -hmm. it, and I can't, but I can't remember if he talked about it in here. Yeah, um, he did. And he had because uh, cozy mystery is kind of like a specific type of mystery, and he didn't really realize the difference. He didn't like go in there right. with enough knowledge to be able to recognize that maybe what he was writing wasn't exactly a cozy so right. it didn't hit well with the cozy audience even though at that time cozies were really hot 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 now it's kind of cooled off a little bit but i still like him so i don't care they will come back you know like they will come back for a while like the whole kind of chick lit and rom-coms were like the thing and then you could not like it was really hard to get them published unless you had them like under new adult or something like people like, Oh no, nobody likes rom-coms and even Hollywood really like stopped making them and now they're back and everybody loves them. So you just keep writing so that when they do circle back and they always do that, you will have a, a huge backlist to go, here you go. Here's 8,000 cozy mysteries. Right. I did it. I was waiting for you. Right here. I was waiting for you. Cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. You got it. I'm all here for you. Spence says that I won't buy a first book in a series till so there's a couple out thing is so real. I made Mr. Spence read Kara's book. He was not the next one wasn't out yet. Oh, that's funny. I think a lot of people feel that way. Like they don't want, they're like, yeah. oh, I'll let you know. I'll wait till there are three out. And then, and then the sad thing is, of course, if nobody buys the first book, then there might not be a second one or a third one. The author or the publisher will be like, oh, this one's a dud. Yeah, especially right. with traditional publishing. Yeah. Um, so if you're doing rapid release, I, Craig had mentioned kind of trying to have your books ready. Right. So that, and right. have yeah. everything in the everything done like the first three books have that ready and then be working on the fourth before you release that first book right right that yeah, stockpiling like, thing i do think mm -hmm. that's i think that's a really good plan especially if you're not sure that you can produce as quickly as you are every two weeks or whatever your strategy is going to be uh yeah i think that's a, a good idea to stockpile if i yeah. were going to rapid release i would have to stockpile because i don't write that fast yeah, yeah. and you know there's some people like alina who she's able to she can whip right. out a book in a month and it'd be like you know this great work and it's complete and i in a month i'm like hmm well 
I was really, really, I, I was thinking about the book a lot, you guys. Like, it was so much thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I can usually do four or four and a half months if I'm writing consistently. But I did not put out a book last year at all, not one. I worked on one. I ended up kind of retooling it this year. And I am making really good progress. But I had to change everything about how I was writing because I kept like waiting for the my pre-pandemic life to happen again and mm. and I was like okay this is the new normal like I could if it comes back I can go back but like I need to figure out how to actually produce a book while this is my reality and so I made a ton of changes and really thought about like what I could do and it seems to be working so happy about that pre well, pre I wonder what that life was like. I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like we've been doing I'm, this forever. I have to, wait, CJ, before we go on, I have to know, are your, I think your headphones and your little cat ears on your headphones are all one unit because it looks like the sides are color coordinated with the, yes, they are. Yeah. I super love those. They're yeah. really cute. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. My fiance has. They have his, different he settings too. The, he broke his his band. And then they do. Aww. I love it. And then they have the That's blinkies. Fit. I Ooh. love it. That's so fancy. Right. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I was just like mesmerized by the cat ear headphones. No, like, no. Who knew such magic existed? All right. <laughs> you know, cat ear headphones are the best. My mine they um, broke, so I have like some soft ones. Oh, that's sadness. I know, but the soft ones are great because I like to listen to things while I'm falling asleep. So it's like it's like a, literally a headband with ears. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's nice. The only problem is I'll forget that I'm wearing them, and then I'll be around like people. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was around someone and their dog started barking at me and I was like what's going on what's going on and I was like oh I have these ears and you're wondering what the hell's going on with me. you're thinking I'm a cat <laughs> or at least some type of weird hybrid Let's that's see. hilarious that's it's two different experiences. Having a series to binge can be fun, but there is something about reading a series from book one in real time and anticipation for the next. Uh -huh. That's true. So I feel like, like the binge consumption culture is really big. Like there's a lot of people, or within the book yeah. community, is often called like a whale reader. Uh -huh. Someone who likes to read like all the books. Mm -hmm. All at once. Yes. Yes. So it's it's an interesting it's an interesting kind of balance that you have to find. But as you mentioned, you have to find the readers who want to do it the way you do it, right? Mm -hmm. Right, because because mm -hmm. you can't. Yes. I mean, you could stockpile for a couple of years and then release, 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 and it is a good way. I mean, well, I should say that it, I have seen it be a really good way to quickly build an audience and then go to a more um, manageable release schedule. But, mm. uh, but you know, it's not for everybody. If I did that too, then I yeah I could. <laughs> I might be able to go faster. I, I could probably go faster if I was combining fiction and nonfiction, which is what I did the year that I did two books in 11 months. I'm going to have to get faster or I'm just going to die. I think that's what it is. <laughs> I think that it, it's just difficult, you know? And mm -hmm. know thyself, author. If you can't do it, then yeah. work with what you can do, right? Like, yeah. Um, yeah. let's yeah. see. Who's someone that's a good example? Like, Jenna Marassi, she releases one book every, what, two or three years? But she's still fairly successful as an yeah, author because she has, like, created all these other avenues right. that keep her name still fresh in people's minds, right? Yeah. Right, right. 
So what do you think about rapid releases? I think that if you could do it, amazing. But one thing that he mentioned, um, Craig Martell mentioned in his book was people who are just starting out and they haven't even finished the first book, but they decide that they're going to do a rapid release and how that could be setting yourself up for a failure because you don't know how long it's going to take for you to finish right. that draft and have the beta reading and have the editing and then do the edits right. and like everything that you need to do that laundry list that we mentioned earlier of uh, things pre book launch that you have to do. Um, not being aware of how long that takes. It, it can be a, yeah. Yeah, a struggle. I, yeah. um, yeah, I like you can burn out. Shorter, oh, easily burn out. With these shorter books, I'm like, I can do rapid release for these. This this makes sense because they're they're like very short, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know. So that'll be fine. But trying to rapid release um, a full length novel for me, that like a full length series of novels, that wouldn't work out for me. Right. Well, and this is the thing. He's pretty heavily focused. I mean, he does mention like, oh, yeah, this would work for a standalone, too. But he's pretty heavily focused on series. And I, you know, I, for me, I write standalones. And so the idea that, um, well, I write standalones and I'm traditionally published. So a lot of this stuff. I didn't feel like super applied to me, but I'm also a student of publishing. And I think that um, at some point I would like to do um, a fiction release that I do on my own, just kind of for the experience of it. A lot of people love mm -hmm. it. I think I might like to have more yeah. control than I have with the traditional publisher. And so there's part of me that's like, oh, security, security, and then, you know, that on the other side. But why not both? Then you I know. The mythical hybrid writer, right? I know. I did do a release on my own like a while back, many years ago, um, where I did like this little book of Marilyn Monroe quotes when I did it for fun. But I have not ever taken the plunge with fiction relief, release. And, um, and I'm really considering it for my next one. I'm not sure. There's part of me that wants to do it and another part of me that's like, uh, yeah, so I'm not sure. But I think, I think it would be a really interesting experiment. I think that it's such a different way of doing things mm -hmm. that you may love it, you may hate it, or you may be like, meh. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I feel like I have more of a, you know, I mean, I was a director of publishing or director of PR for a publishing house. So, um, and I still consult. And mm -hmm. so I feel like I have, like, I know how a book launch happens. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I would not be going into it totally blind like some folks do when they're, you know, doing their their first release, right. their first indie fiction release. Oh, absolutely. And even while you're doing it as a, tr a traditionally published person, you're still doing a lot of the back end. You're doing all the back end. <laughs> you don't get to pick your cover. You don't get to pick your, you know, you could give them like, oh, I like this. You know, but, but you don't get to pick your release date. You don't get to pick your release strategy. But certainly with the marketing and the promo, that a ton of that, of course, falls on you. So, yeah, that's like an indie author. Yeah. Right. So as you, I think as you were saying, like, it's not that different. Right. It was It'll just feel, it might feel very different. I think it might. That's what makes me want to try it a little bit. Right. I enjoy it, even as it makes more of my hair white. I'm trying to see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's some things that we've missed talking about that could be. So of course, we don't want to tell you all the things in the books. No. No. I think Lori Barrett has a really interesting comment. Uh, so it's the difference than the distribution channel. Well, yeah. So, so, so part of it, the tra traditional publisher will take care of Mark. I mean, my, so my experience is that I have books published with St. Martin's with random house before it was part of penguin with penguin with source books. Um, I feel like there's another one and I'm missing it anyway. So a number of major publishers, three of the big five and, um, so marketing, as far as the way that the book looks, 
getting it into bookstores, uh, some you know forms of marketing, certainly they take care of it. But that most of the actual promotion, PR, that was all on me. And, um, and the thing is, those sales numbers are yours to keep. So if they do a great job, those numbers are yours. But if they do a terrible job or nothing, which is commonly what happens, those numbers are also yours to keep. So you always have to be, you can't just like, well, I finished my book and just let it go off. You have to be great. Selling it, working it every day. Um, yeah, so you you're uh, okay. So Barrett said, "I have a friend." Yeah, this is it. I had a friend who signed a book deal who said their agent discounted the idea of a hybrid. I will tell you why. Because your agent does not make any money if you sell a, if you decide to sell a book on your own. Your agent makes money when you sell to a publisher. That's why. <laughs> if I were an right. agent, I'd be like, "Ooh, hybrid." I don't know if you want to do that. Yeah. The thing is, I already like. I don't feel like I have anything to prove. I've already published multiple books with a traditional publisher. So I don't feel like I need to check that. I've already checked that box off on my, you know, bucket list or whatever. So for me, I'm, you know, I'm on a national television show. I have a really good email list. So I would maybe like to have the power to control the pricing, to do a book bub. You know, to, do those kinds of things where you can kind of mess around with that. And I worked in advertising for a long time. I was a copywriter. And so I I just feel like it would be kind of an adventure. But there's also a little part of me that's like, well, it's a little cozy at my publisher, so I maybe I'll stay. So True. that's it. And uh, doing it all yourself can be very um, it can be very overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's see. Yeah. I think I missed. I oh, I didn't read the last chapter where it's talking about success or failure. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Well, and okay. So let me give you an example of success or failure because it's all in how you frame it. You know how I said uh, I had many years ago done a little um, indie release that. I would never have pitched to a publisher because I knew it would not sell and I did not want that to go like into my official numbers. So for me, I made money on the deal to success, right? And, but it's completely outside my genre. It's not something I would have pitched to a publisher. If I had pitched that book to a publisher and it sold the number of copies that it sold, they would have considered it a failure. So, mm. well, and, and even the same publisher, it's not just about the numbers, it's how big the advances they give you for it. So you get a big advance and you don't sell through, you're a failure. If you get a small advance and you do sell through, you're a success, even if it's the exact same number of books. Right. Mm. So if they give you a little tiny advance, then it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, traditionally published authors keep, keep some of the advance for marketing. I have done that. I will tell you with my first novel, uh, 15 Minutes of Shame, I spent my entire advance, which is a very nice sum of money, on PR. <laughs> and in some ways, it was good. I did like a big book tour, uh, which was some of it was sponsored, some of it was paid for, a big chunk of it was paid for by the publisher, some of it was paid for by me. And, um, but, they had some problems with distribution. I mean, this is Penguin at the time. They had problems with distribution. So I would show up in a city, I would do events, and the bookstore would have to cancel because they didn't have books on time. Like there was a there was a supply chain oh. problem. Yeah. It was Ooh. yeah. And so you do all that work and all that. So so yes, I would say if you are traditionally published or if you're indie published, you should definitely reserve part of that. Um, you know, part of your budget or your advance for marketing. I don't know if I would blow the wad like I did with my first novel, but um, but yeah, I always spend a good chunk of it. I have too much written that I feel I have no choice but to start releasing. Is this some kind of imposter syndrome? I think so. What do you guys think? Maybe. Why aren't you releasing? Oh, yeah. yeah, good question. Why? Why aren't you releasing it? Are these all in the same world or in the same series or are they different standalones? 
what's going on. Tell us more. And have you, have you, I know that you've released things on um, like reader sites, not Wattpad, but it was something else, I think, along those lines. Mm -hmm. But have you released books? What would you advise a new author considering public to spend marketing for self-publishing? I, I would advise anyone to start finding the readership start a newsletter, um, boost up your social media, figure the one spot that you want to do it because you don't have to do them all. It's not necessary. Uh -uh. It's not It's not Pokemon. You don't have to catch them all. <laughs> right. You know, and it, figure, the and one, you, figure the one that works for you. Yeah. Well, and when you try to do that, like back in the day, they would always say like, oh, you need to be on Facebook. You need this. You need this. You need this. But what happens is there's so many channels that you can't, you could spend all day doing social media and not write. Right. And some of them you're going to love. Like I personally really like Instagram and some of them you hate. I personally hate Facebook. So my Facebook, any Facebook efforts I make are always <laughs> half-assed and terrible. And on Instagram, you can tell I give it some love. So. Yeah, your Instagram's gorgeous. My Instagram looks like a graveyard. I think I posted something like in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> it's very sad there. I, but it's one of my favorites. And I feel that, Samara. Right? I know. I mean, and I've had phases where I've done that, where I go like, oh, it's been four months. Although I find that now that I'm scheduling ahead, that I've got like, oh, I've got all these things in buffer. So I, oh, I need to write copy for this. Oh, I need to write, you know, I need to do this. So I feel I like I'm better at it. I think I love to look at it. It's so pretty. I think they're changing TikTok. So you're going to be able to schedule them. I'm not sure when that's supposed to roll out. But yeah, I think that's, that's going to be a thing. If TikTok. any of you are TikTokers. Right. But I'm on there and I spend way too much time. Like it's such a, it's such a my, like a time suck and it's a lie. Cause you're like, oh, this is only 15 seconds. This is the good, I, I could watch a couple of these for 15 seconds, no problem. And then, you know, five Seven hours later. Hours later. <laughs> I have nothing. All of my friends have been barraged with like 30,000 TikToks and I just think you have to see this. This is so incredible. I want you to know though. <laughs> if you find friends who are also wasting their time on TikTok, that can be draining. Yeah. But it's also kind of like, I don't know, it feels good because you're like, it's not just me. Mm -mm. Well, we do it. we do have like the author tube TikTok queen on. Like I saw Data was on earlier in the chat, right? She's the queen of TikTok on uh, for author tubers, I think. Let's see. Right. So MM oh. came back to me. You have a huge series that equals 2.1 million words. You have four series indie published, released on Amazon in one series through an indie pub publishing house. All right. Starting in tw December 2020, you decided to release 10 books in 10 months, and everyone thinks I've lost my mind, but I want hard copies. Why do you want why do you want hardcovers oh. right now? You have 25 dress and ink it. That's what, what it was. Ink it. What? So, like, if you're going to release those 10 books, 12 books, wait, was it 10 and 12 or 12 and 12? 10 books 10 in 12, 12 months. Which is so ambitious. I love it. But if you're going to release those, I wouldn't, I'd wait until the pandemic is over to release in hardcover because people are not buying as many hardcovers right now. They're buying ebooks. Like, that's just what the numbers are. They're, st they're still buying a lot of books. Like ebook numbers are great right now, but hardcovers are not. Right. So wait, hold off a little bit till the bookstores open back up again. Cause I, that's a direct correlation. Probably this is the next thing, but I will not get into that. <laughs> I, if there wasn't this whole like panoramic happening, I wouldn't have gotten on TikTok. Cause I was like, I am too old for TikTok. And I refuse to do that to myself. I'm not going to be that old dummy. That's trying to figure out these dance moves. Mm -hmm. so I am the old dummy trying to figure out the dance moves. I haven't posted any yet. <laughs> but, oh my gosh. I like the, I got the one thing I can do that. Okay. But everything else, I look awful, but that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I do a little like, 
<laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to do that. Oh. I want to look cool. No, you don't look cool. You, you look don't like look cool. Jeans. I bet you would look cool. <laughs> I don't look cool. I but what I just did there, that's like the closest you're gonna get to a TikTok for me. So yeah. Oh, funny. It's not good. It's not good at all. Oh I right. love scheduling Instagram posts. Makes you feel efficient. You really get to curate mm. the story and telling on each of my accounts. See, I don't there's probably that's probably one problem I have with um Instagram. I don't have like a, a story or an aesthetic at all like even in my like world like just in my world in general there's no aesthetic there's no like overarching theme where everything like you know i'm not like an alt punk goth princess like i got nothing <laughs> you are to me girlfriend <laughs> that was, that was, that was, that was oh. just with a social media presence in which it's okay not to share my face twitter Mm -hmm. Or no, 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 no. Uh, Goodreads. Right? Oh, that's true. Yeah, oh, yeah. Goodreads. I do want to say too to Barrett, this, um, thank you for asking a question and we will not bite. I'm so glad that you asked. Tamara never bites, ever. No. Um, just that one time, but that's it. <laughs> That, but we were just <laughs> bragging about the book because it was terrible. Oh, right. He had it coming. Okay. <laughs> Portia says, my parents want me to make sure that my books are available in paperback. And I told them nobody's really buying physical books. They're saying the 55 readers and up on physical books. That may be true. That may be true. I haven't looked at those numbers. And if, yeah. and if that's your audience, yeah. Yeah. Are you writing mysteries? Because if you're writing mysteries, those 55 year old ladies will appreciate a paperback and they'd also like it in large print. The saying. Yes, they would. Yeah. Although Which I will I don't say think my that mother Amazon is, offers that. I don't think you can get large print through um, Amazon. I think you can just make your, you know, like design the interior of your book larger. Mm. I'm sorry. What were you going to say, CJ? Sorry. I was going to say, um, my mother is an avid cozy reader. Mm -hmm. She lo loves, loves cozies. Um, and talking with her has been interesting because she loves her Kindle, her tablet. Yeah. I don't think she has a Kindle as an iPad, but she loves her tablet. So, like, I don't think we should discount 55 plus readers. Oh, no, no, I'm not, no, I'm not saying, oh, no, no, yeah, they, they love, they, they love ebooks too. Yeah. I'm just saying yeah. like, you're, you, if you're writing, if you're writing mysteries, your readers, more, your target reader is like women over 50. And so you're yeah. more like you, you should not, not provide a paper book with that group. If you were writing fantasy, right then you could probably get away with getting doing ebook only but there but just each genre like all ages but if depending on the kind of romance you write you're you know some of them you really should offer a paper book as well as an ebook yeah my mom does both she likes the ebooks and the paper books i like we were okay you guys this is like such a florida thing um yesterday was like 82 degrees i had bought these well i bought one for my mother for for christmas and mike bought one for me for valentine's day it's a giant floaty it's like a recliner except it floats oh. <laughs> and, and but the pool is too cold right now like you know because it's been chilly so the pool's too cold right now like because i need it to be like 80 degrees and i didn't want to heat it because that takes all day so um so we got these giant floats that you're where you're actually like pretty far above water you don't really get wet but you're out there floating in the pool and i would not take my ipad out there i had like a paper book just in case goes in the drink yeah right and Much I like to take to dry out a paperback than it is to dry out a Kindle. That's exactly that. You take a really big bag of rice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And a lot of tears. And a lot of tears. 
Yeah. So MM says that uh, with Amazon, you do get a large print edition as an option. Okay, cool. And Laurel is wondering, does Goodreads actually work for anyone? I am working on a video about this right now. I love Goodreads and I will tell you all about it. It does work. You just have to know what you're doing. So I'll be doing a video on that pretty soon. Very soon. Isn't that kind of the theme of like all um, social media? It does work, but you have to know what you're doing. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. Thing about, the thing about Goodreads, though, is that you're really shooting like, you know, people go, oh, I'm really good on Facebook and people buy books on Facebook. But everybody on Goodreads loves to read. Everybody on Goodreads. So you're shooting fish in a barrel of fish. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's really that your readers are much more concentrated. It's much easier to find people who want to um, who want to read your kind of book. You can literally look up the books that are, you know, your comps, the books that are similar to yours and find out who loves them the most. Those people are your friends, which you cannot do on Facebook or Twitter or any other social that media. Is fair. You can kind of do it on Instagram, right? Because you can see what, what books, the different bookstagrammers are posting. But you, but Goodreads is, it is just a gold mine for readers and early reviewers and you name it. Yeah, Goodreads, Goodreads. Well, I'll be looking forward to that video because I definitely Thanks. could use some uh, yeah. a tutorial on how to make Goodreads work for me. I've been yeah. on Goodreads for years, but I mean, um, you know, there's a Writer's Workshop Goodreads group that you can join. There's a link of that in the description. Right. But um, I don't spend as much time on Goodreads as I used to, which I feel like that's mm -hmm. me and all social media. Right. Except for TikTok. Well, except TikTok, <laughs> of course. The one that will probably, you know, help me the least is the one that I'm like, Oh, I'll hang out here. <laughs> and look, Spence is looking forward to your Goodreads video as well. Thanks. Ladies, we are at the top of the hour. Can you believe it? What? That went by yeah. really fast. It did it go by really fast. Did. Thank goodness. <laughs> I'm always worried that it's going to drag on and we're going to be bored. <laughs> No, not with this crowd. Are you kidding? We have so many good questions in the comments. And uh, yeah, everybody is fantastic. So yes. Yeah. No. I always ask questions. It makes it go along so much more better, especially if the book, like, I don't think that this book was the worst book that we've read. No. It's not the best no. either. No, there's a video no. about the worst book we've read. <laughs> You'll find it right here on Claire's <laughs> channel. <laughs> In oh, that was awful. <laughs> it was oh, awful. Yeah. I was so mad. <laughs> okay. um, Does that say that but, on your thumbnail? I feel like you should change the title of your thumbnail to say, this, this was the worst, the worst book we've, book ever, we've read. ever read. Right, because we talk about it regularly. <laughs> We do bring it up, too. but it was like, uh, it was like negative. Five oh, stars. oh, avoid this one. <laughs> you know what? I'm yeah. gonna make a note. Of yeah, that. I will change the thumbnail. That's funny. Um, so yeah. let's do our goodbyes and tell them our final thoughts as we go. I'm gonna make okay. a, a reminder. <laughs> okay. So. Which one, CJ, do you want to start with telling us your final thoughts on the book and then, you know, letting people know where they can find you? Yeah. Um, again, my name is CJ Bloyer. I'm a writer of things. Um, I think I may come back and like peruse this book again when I get to a point where I'm ready to think about that. Um, maybe in May. Um, otherwise, you can find me on Twitter at CJ Bloyer. Actually, I'm CJ Bloyer everywhere, I think. Um, and <laughs> yeah. Cool. Hmm. Are any of you using Clubhouse as authors? Mm. 
I am I am not. not, but I keep somebody um just invited me to it. Um uh oh you know, yeah, somebody just invited me to it. I haven't checked it out yet, but I have heard about it. So I think you have to have an invitation to join, right? I don't know. I don't if know. Thinking, if I'm thinking of the same thing, I think that it is um I think it's Clubhouse and I think somebody has to invite you. I'll invite you. Tamara, do you want to, do you want me to, Heck yeah. if I decide to join, I have, somebody sent me an invite to join, so I'll send it to you, so if you want to be a part of the clubhouse. Yeah, I want to see I don't it. know, how, yeah, I don't know how, I haven't really checked it out, but I have heard about it. How about you, Audie Jack, are you on, uh, are you on uh, clubhouse, do you like it? Is it where all the cool kids are hanging out? <laughs> so I'm not invited after all. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Hmm. Do you want me to say something before? Like, okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. I'm Lisa Daly. And uh, on my channel, I talk about how to write uh, romantic comedies and other types of books, get published, and write a book you're super proud of. Um, and tonight is the... Um, uh, boozy Planorama, Planorama, which normally Caro co-hosts with me, but you know, since she is in Moving Hell, we'll have like a rotating cast of fun friends. So, uh, so that's eight o'clock tonight on eight Eastern on, over on my channel. We'll be planning our our author planning for the month. It's more fun than it sounds. <laughs> Ooh, and Goodreads video coming up soon. Uh, what are your final thoughts on this book? Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So here are my final thoughts on the book. I would give it like a three-star rating. I found some things very helpful. I found other things not so helpful. Um, I think that uh, um, there was – I did think that there was some good – uh, pieces of advice in there, but I also felt like I sort of had to like hack through the weeds to find them. So I appreciated the little wrap up at the end of the chapter. And so maybe it would have been smarter to kind of skim the chapters and then go back and read if it's something that you were really interested in that that kind of backwards reading might have been the way for to manage that better. So like I give it like a solid three or three and a half stars. I mean, you have to admire anybody who's producing like this guy is. I mean, it's really phenomenal. It's, yeah, it's kind of yeah intimidating. I don't. He has a family too. Like, how do you how are you doing this? How do you write that many books? Although I look at like Chris. Fa so okay, here's a really good example because I think the two of them get compared a lot, right? And I yeah. think that Chris Fox has it so much more buttoned up. I can breeze through one of his uh, one of his writing books. I think his information is like he it's there's not a lot of fluff in there. It's like really good information. I often learn something I didn't know before. And so I and he's you know really um open about kind of how he does everything and what he what he does. And so to me I find somebody like uh like Chris a lot easier to kind of want to emulate or even believe I could. I I look at this and I go a book a week. That's like insanity to me. And I get, you know, right. He says, not everybody's going to do this, but I just think like, why would you try? <laughs> like I just can't even fathom it. So it wasn't a good match for me, but I could see how other people might get good information out of it. I would probably give it um, closer to four stars, but I feel like he is talking more to a writer like me who is an indie, who is going to be writing under two different pen names, who is, you know, publishing more often than you are. So it there's more information than I can find that is usable. Oh, good. So um, I, um, like I said earlier in the broadcast, I really appreciated the information that he gave about um, publishing shorter books, because that wasn't, just like Lisa, that wasn't something that I'd really ran across before. So that mm -hmm. was very helpful. Um, and I like anecdotes, so I, that, um, that didn't bother me. I think that his, his writing, um, is like as chaotic as my mind works. So, <laughs> so we just, a good match. 
yeah, we were just going together. Here it goes, there it goes, everywhere it goes. And I was just flowing along with them. <laughs> but um, so my name is Tamara Woods, and this is my channel where I talk about books and writing. I create cozy mysteries. I'm going to be creating other things, and I'll probably talk about it a little bit on this channel. But if you want to hear more about these other projects that aren't cozies, I would suggest you join my Patreon. I have a link in the description. I am trying to reach 50 Patreon supporters. I think I'm at 36. So if you want to support me, I would love you forever. Come and join me. Come and join me. Come and join me. Um, I have ideas and things and stuff that I want to do that um, Patreon will definitely help me to do it. Just like um, very soon. Okay, very soon within the next two to three months. Very soon, fairly soon. I am going to be releasing some merch and things um, because I do, I do all this stuff and I wanna have like representation of it, if not for y'all, but for me. Like I have this like writer's workshop. We've been doing this for what, two, three years. I, I want a yep. thing with a thing on it. Like I wanna have a thing, you know what I mean? To be able to like, be like this, look, I made this. <laughs> Like, here's the and, thing. Um, hashtag, yeah, here's the thing. Like, hashtag write stuff. That's my um, tweet chat that I've been hosting for four or five years, and I don't have merch for it. But it happens every Tuesday on 9 p.m. Eastern on, on Twitter. And there's also a Facebook group. And that link is in the description. And it's something that I love. And I want to be able to be like, oh, yes, what's this on my coffee mug? Mm, this is this group that I've been running for five years, and I really love it. <laughs> like you know those things and then stuff yeah. for my writing and like i don't know i just want to represent my things that i do that i love and i spend so much time and i hope that people who enjoy these things would i hope that they would want it too right. i'm sure they would and and uh, like when you get to 50 subscribers you're going to be releasing paperback editions right is that correct that still? is true that That's why true. I signed up, right? Because I want a paperback, want a paperback of wiped out, bailed out. Yeah. What I'm hoping, this is the hope, is that um, by the time we're at that 50 mark, I'll have finished the trilogy and then I'll be able to release them in paperback and then also have a um, box set. And the box awesome. set would include, oh, by the way, I have a newsletter. And if you wanna see what kind of stuff I write, I have a story that's free that you sign up with your email address that you get on my newsletter. I want that story, in addition to the book that was in um, Mystery Follows Her, that novella, to be mm -hmm. in this box set with the Wiped Out and the other two books. So it'll all be like a nice box set with an empty paperback and stuff and the things, and ah, I'm excited. All right. Cool. Well, I hadn't planned on talking about all that stuff, but I guess I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, people are excited about that. Very. Aphrodite's really excited. Ooh, I'll see you tonight. Uh, Aphrodite is like, yay, merch. That's what we've been waiting for. Aphrodite's the best. Great. I love you so much. Mm -hmm. I love all of you guys who are with us and chatting with us, whether you're watching this as a replay or you're sitting and watching now and you're not really talking, I appreciate you. So otherwise, we're just yelling into the void, like crazy writers that we are. So we will be deciding what books we're gonna be reading for March. And this time I'll actually release a video about it on here. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. <laughs> so thanks again, y'all. And the links for these ladies are in the description along with the links of the other ladies who weren't able to be with us today. So the description has a lot of stuff. You should check it out. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.